What's up dudes and dudes to the year now my name is Seth and we are back here in the Trove to the Dove and today we're gonna be doing a tutorial on fishing uh, how the boats end up operating and also going to be talking about the pirate ships and the pirate merchants more importantly uh, not to mention how Trove of Wonders end up working and stuff like that so it's probably gonna be a little bit more of a lengthy video I'm gonna try and keep the time a little bit lower with it but I want to say how y'all doing today folks hope you're doing fantastically wonderful hope this video makes your day even better and I hope it ends up helping you out before we get started we very much appreciate if you would hit that like button helps me out more than you know and thank you so much if you do now this is actually right by the hub the hub is over there you're gonna end up coming over here right and then there's gonna be this little fishy merchant guy you walk into his space you talk to him and then you can actually trade glim that you can find out in the world for a, a bunch of different things so we can actually buy our first ship right here I gotta be very careful with the amount of glim that I end up having because it didn't really have as much of an indicator to show that we ended up actually craft or getting the ship but we're gonna grab it right here that's gonna give us a mastery level as well gg because of the amount of mastery that you end up getting from it and uh the one thing that i do want to show you is that the ships themselves actually have to have a sail in order to operate you can end up using a boat while you're just out in the world uh but you're gonna have to have a sail in order to actually make it to work Honestly speaking, I don't even know what the button is for the boat, so I gotta look this up. Aha! So it says to hold the left joystick in to switch between mount, boat, and mag rider. Also, we can hold in the right joystick to switch to class uh, because they actually have a couple different convenient ob uh, controls like that. Okay, so if we bring out our boat... How do we actually do this? Can we... Okay, so now we can let go. Let's swap over to our boat. Does that mean that it's going to... Oh, I see. So middle, uh, like, middle clicking with the uh, joystick is now just going to actually put us on our boat at all times because we're actually cycling between them. That's pretty handy. That's actually not too bad. But as you can see, we don't have a sail on our boat right now, right? Which means that we actually can't travel. So we're going to need to get our hands on... Um, on a sale which thankfully we can actually afford one right here and i also want to point out folks that this is also another very good way of making mastery especially if you end up having some glim uh, we'll talk more about why in a bit because it's got to do with the pirate merchants themselves but anyways we're gonna get that sale uh, and now we can actually use the boat in the water so the way that the boats are gonna end up working is you're gonna sit here perfectly still and you can turn yourself with the joystick you cannot go backwards and then you're going to hold up to push the sail out more and more and more and then the boat is going to slowly end up accelerating that's why there is actually uh, a bunch of different stats for the boats but honestly speaking you're not gonna worry about turning acceleration or anything like that the most uh, beneficial uh, stat that you're gonna be going for with the boats is just the movement speed because the only time you end up ever using boats is when you're in like an elemental world and it's like an ocean world or something like that and there's like huge gaps between uh, the next island that you're trying to go to so you'll use your boat to sail all the way to the next island because technically speaking it's going to be faster than your wings. Sails of course do absolutely nothing they are just a vanity item but of course end up giving mastery. That's the big reason why you want to keep that in mind. Now while we can't end up fishing off of our boat uh, let me just grab a fishing rod right here, and then we're going to grab some lures. And I do want to point this out as well, folks. You don't have to worry about your glim to lure ratio. 90 lures is guaranteed going to end up giving you more than 900 glim. So I'm just going to grab that right now. Also grab our fishing line. And unfortunately, I don't know whether or not... Whoops, that was the wrong button. How, how do we fish? But first, before we do that, oh, just a couple cubits. Okay, that's a little bit strange. So the game doesn't seem to tell you in any way, shape, or form in the controls how to fish, but all you have to actually do is just look at a puddle of water and tap X. And then he's just gonna end up throwing his lure out. Now, the way that fishing works is very, very standard. I'm sure anyone who's played Harvest Moon or even Stardew Valley knows how this operates, is you just sit here and wait like an idiot. <laughs> I'm just joking. But you sit here and just wait for the lure to end up bobbing up and down, which usually takes like 30 to 45 seconds for the average. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Does it seriously like increase the fishing time with like patron or something? Yeah, okay. So that was 30 to 45 seconds, right? And we got 
uh, Fat Catfish, which is actually a fantastic find right off the hop. Needless to say, you're going to end up doing this for hours and hours and hours. The game itself actually does have an in-game badge system, which we'll talk more about that in another video because I don't want to talk about it today. Uh, but needless to say, once you end up completing a certain amount of fishing badges, I think you have to fish like 15,000 fish or something like that. And then you're going to end up getting these weird seaweed wings. Uh, it's cool, but even on the PC version of Trove, I don't have those wings because of the fact that fishing is like, it, it takes so much time. Another fat catfish. Like, seriously, do I just have that much luck? What's going on? But anyways, you'll be doing this for five zillion years, right? And this is where the complexity comes with fishing. So uh, in order to fish in a lava biome, you're going to have to craft a different fishing rod over here. You're going to have to go for the lava fishing rod uh, right here. And then you're going to be able to fish in the lava. I don't know. Yeah, you actually have to craft this uh, candy fishing pole in order to fish in chocolate. And there's going to be a couple other like special fishing rods that you can get either through the badge system or you just end up getting them luckily uh, while you're out in the world uh, or fishing and stuff like that. It's actually you can fish a fishing rod, right? So that's pretty cool. Now, the ancient scales, because the, you know, if you're sitting here wondering, the way that those end up working is depending on the biome that you're in and some of the areas that you're in, for example, the hub, you can get different types of ancient or enchanted fish. Now, in order to get any of the enchanted scales, uh, as far as I know, anyways, don't quote me on this, you're gonna need the Wish Fisher fishing rod, or maybe it's the Lady of the Lake one. Maybe it is. I, I'm not. I, yeah, there it is. It would be the Lady of the Light because it says to enchant any fish that swims nearby, right? So that you, I, I guess you need the Lady of the Lake in order to get enchanted fish. Otherwise, you're gonna get ancient fish. And the way that that's gonna work is just randomly. Like you'll be fishing in, you know, uh, uh, fishing in the hub here is gonna give you the hub hugger. Or if you end up going all the way to the bottom right in this map there's actually going to be a secret island out in the hub and it's going to be a lava island and that's where you get the lava version of the hub hugger uh, honestly speaking i would say to look online uh, because i don't really know where you get every single one of the fish while i did end up getting all of the different ancient enchanted fish on PC. Uh, you know, I just ended up looking up, like there's a Google Doc somewhere online. I'll try to remember to put it in the description, but it actually shows you where you actually fish all of the different types of fish. And honestly speaking, I think that that's a little bit more efficient than watching a video, right? Efficient. Get it? But anyways, needless to say, that's pretty much the fishing in a nutshell. And then you loot collect those ancient or enchanted fish, and then you're going to end up getting the scales from it. So you're going to be able to craft these extra ships once you end up fishing 10 ancient fish, and then uh, loot collect the scales and so on and so forth. There's an enchanted one right there. And I mean, granted, of course, you know, these resources themselves are going to be very, very costly for us uh, right off the hop. Uh, golden seashells, however, you actually get those from completing dungeons in the ocean so water dungeons and stuff like that you have to have water around the dungeon you know it it can end up technically generating on land but still be within the parameters of an ocean biome you know what i'm saying so you gotta be careful for that but needless to say, you'll get the hang of all the dungeons and how they end up working. You're going to end up uh, going to those, and each of the dungeon chests is going to end up dropping the golden seashells. And as you can see with all of the sails, so on and so forth, this is why I say that you use them for mastery, because there's actually a lot of scales, and they're very, or sails, I mean not scales, and they're very, very cheap. Now, the dud item that you can get out of fishing is the old boot, which you're then going to end up using uh, to end up crafting any of these boot allies right so there's gonna be this one's gonna require an old boot old boot old boot this one requires a digsley now the way that you end up getting a digsley is while you're out mining you can randomly get a trove chest uh, or a treasure trove I, I don't know it's like a mining chest that you get from mining and it's gonna rarely contain the digsley ally and then you can use that to construct this boot which is gonna actually give you it's not showing us the stats for some reason there we go there it is but it's gonna give you 25 laser mancy very very good for uh, you know, a starting item for, you know, mining and stuff like that. But I'm 
pretty sure the Digsley itself actually gives more laser mancy. Don't quote me on that. It's been a long time since I looked at those allies. But the fact of the matter is, you're going to need two Digsleys. One that you can unlock yourself, and another one that you can stuff into this boot, right? So that is pretty much this uh, part of the hub and the fishing in a nutshell. Uh, but I'm going to go off into an adventure world now and try to find myself a pirate ship so that I can explain that. Now, this will be a good opportunity to talk about the water elemental world because I still am going to end up making, uh, you know, talking about the fire world and the air world separately for sure once I talk about radiant shards and stuff like that. But this is the water elemental world. We haven't touched this in the series yet, but needless to say, it's going to be all ocean. And despite the fact that it says that this is actually an undead biome over here, it's an undead ocean, right? Like the haunted isles. So you're going to end up finding islands out in the ocean and stuff like that. And for the most part that's where you're gonna end up spending all your time in the dungeons except for uh the oceans that have the uh the the treasure isles or maybe they're called the lost sea or something right now uh these biomes as you see the one that we're going up to right now are going to be the only ones that are going to actually generate pirate ships and right here this is actually a gold pirate ship treasure isles so they are still called treasure isles maybe they're called the lost ocean out in the normal uh adventure worlds or something like that but there is a water dungeon right there there's no water dungeons outside of being in the treasure isles biome because naturally if you're in the undead it's going to generate all of the undead biomes maybe you can find like uh floating islands out in the undead biomes too honestly speaking it's been a long time since i've been in the uh ocean biome but if i'm wrong about that who cares now these merchants right here, these are pretty much the top of the top. They are some of the most expensive merchants in the game. You're not going to touch these for a very long time, if ever, because of the amount that these guys cost. So you're going to come up to this guy and you're going to be able to buy a Trove of Wonder for a full stack of Flux. That's 10,000 Flux for one box. If you can open 70 of these boxes, you're going to trigger the Karma Bar and actually get a rare item guaranteed out of it. But otherwise, you can rarely end up getting all sorts of real game-breaking mounts out of this one. You know, you can get a bird that can uh, walk on water, one that walks on lava. You can get a turtle with a cannon on it that can end up shooting and destroying blocks and stuff like that. Links are in the description for my other video that talks about Rose, Trove's rarest mounts. That's actually got to do with the Trove's of Wonders, so check that one out. Because the rarest mount that you can get in the entire game is Gonda, who I call Jub Jub on the PC Let's Play. And uh, he actually creates blocks as you walk in the air so i mean yeah like seriously get hyped now the other uh big common item you're gonna end up getting out of troves of wonder is a fragment of wonder you use those as currency over at this guy and granted they're going to be very very expensive but some of these items that you get out of this guy are actually very very useful a lot of them aren't I, I just want to say that right here because a lot of these flasks are very, very useless while a lot of them end up being very, very powerful. Valorous Flask, for example, uh, you know, has a chance to recover one charge, meaning a flask charge, when you deal a critical hit. Of course, that can end up being very, very good if you end up having a lot of crit hit at the end of the game, right? But... Again, you know, that is actually on a little bit of a cooldown that the game does not explain. And because of it, it might not be as good because uh, if you end up building your character correctly, you're not going to have any health, so you're going to get one shot by everything at the end game. That's why you go for death defying. And honestly speaking, you know, these are more gimmicky flasks and you can end up using them to be sure you know some people end up using them but for the most part death defying is going to do everything that you need it to outside of if you're like a tankier character or something like that it, you know it doesn't really matter but uh you know I, i'm not going to talk about all of these in detail because you can check them out for yourself uh, for example the mega miner if you can get your hands on this one you don't need any laser mancy stat you don't need rings you don't need the digsley you don't need nothing just pop a flask and this is going to give you the strongest laser for mining that you could ever imagine. While it's not going to be able to destroy dungeon blocks or anything like that, it's going to be able to dig blocks at an alarming speed. Now, Sure Strike is the one item that I would say if you get anything out of these Fragments of Wonder, you're going to need Sure Strike. It is a requirement until the late game where it's going to give you 20% to your critical hit chance, which is your chance to end up getting a crit off for 10 seconds, right? So every time you drink a flask, it's going to give you 20% more crit hit. That is a requirement until you end up getting powerful enough gems that you can have 
let's say 70% plus for your natural crit hit stat. And even then, you know, this would boost that up 20%, so 70, 80, 90%, right? But the fact of the matter is that you're never gonna wanna swap off a sure strike until you have enough crit hit for yourself that you can swap this emblem off for another one. You know, most of all, I would recommend the Beamer emblem or the Evil Eye emblem because these guys actually uh, summon an ally based on your magical or your physical damage and end up actually doing quite a bit of damage at the late game. The Beamer emblem alone can end up doing like two to three mil every hit and can actually finish bosses in U9 for you, right? The decoy emblem, I just want to point this out, that one's more for fun. It's a gimmick. It sucks. You don't actually get it. All it's going to do is throw down a big fat copied version of yourself, which is hilarious. And then the paragon wings are just that, paragon wings, where they're just for prestige. They look like diamonds. You can check links in the description so that you can see what all of that stuff looks like. But anyways, I gotta go and find a normal pirate ship now. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, because I did actually talk about this in another video, but I just want to say that completing dungeons in an elemental water world, or any of the elemental worlds, is going to yield that gem box in general. So if we complete dungeons in the water world, looks like I'm going to have to cross country it. If you complete a dungeon in the water world, you're going to end up getting a water elemental gem box, which is going to contain a random generated water gem. So pretty much what the late game ends up being is farming for a good gem type, right? Uh, you know, one that ends up having the perfect stats, which I have plenty of videos that talk about just that. Uh, you know, links are in the description again. Um, but the fact of the matter is that that ends up becoming pretty much the bulk of the end game. So you obviously, you know, you need a better water gem. Go farm the water world for a couple hours and hopefully you'll end up getting lucky. Maybe you won't. Or if you need a better air gem, go farm the air world, etc, etc. All right, we got our pirate ship over here. Is this a normal one? Yes. Okay, good. So there's a couple different versions of these pirate ships that can end up generating. By the way, on... Oh, it doesn't happen on this ship. But every other ship, I'm pretty sure this is the only one that doesn't have it, is actually going to generate with a cannon. Doesn't really do much block damage, but you can end up destroying these things around the world, and they're going to give you, like, uh, I think they give you flux and seashells and stuff like that. But anyways, there's going to be two different types of versions of this ship. One that's just this one right here, and another one that's going to generate with purple sails, uh, or uh, purple character kind of on the sail, right? And they're going to end up having different items that they sell appropriately, because these are going to be the uh, different merchants, right? So this is a Treasure Isles merchant right here, and we generated one that sells a buddy bought soul trap. Now, the way that this is going to work is you're going to end up spending your glim. Of course, the game wants you to fish. Spend your glim to end up getting a soul trap box. I'll just buy one because that's all I can afford right now. And what this is going to randomly contain is an ally that is under the robot tab. If you actually go into the collections menu, you can go ahead and see all the different allies that are Treasure Island based. Uh, and then you're gonna end up getting all sorts of different uh, just different allies and stuff like that while there is also going to be different rarities of you know there's going to be a legendary mount or ally that you can end up getting out of those boxes and then it's going to end up being very very good right because that's the thing is uh for the robotic one you can end up getting the shield servitor i think that's what he's called and that one's not really that useful honestly speaking folks if you're a new player i would recommend either uh you know if you're a new player and you really want to try and get uh one of the allies and start spending all of your glim i would honestly recommend either going for the cat boxes because you can get the uh, prowling uh, shadow cat out of them which is one of the most useful allies in the game ends up having life steal on it and it's just so useful especially for the beginning of the game like it ends up keeping you alive very very well i'll explain this little hole here in a minute uh or you end up going for the raptor ally because then you can get the raptor berserker ally which is one of the most useful allies in the game as far as a physical character is concerned. As far as a magic character, you're going to want to focus on the Chronomancer Cubes, Lee, or if the holiday event ends up coming around, hopefully next year, doesn't look like it came this year, you can end up getting a random box out in the world that can end up dropping Prefect Penguins, not Perfect Penguins, Prefect Penguins, and those are the best uh, magic allies in the game. Now, the reason I wanted to explain this is I actually have another tutorial in the description talking about Neon Night Sky Wings. Now, if you've looked at one of your crafting tables, you've noticed that you can actually craft a free pair of wings. They're actually insanely difficult to get, 
Don't know if someone on console is going to get them for a very long time just because of the amount of resources that you need. Even if you're paid to win, the resources you need are insane. Now, this right here, this hole in front of the ship, is going to be a dead giveaway that if you actually come down here and uh, mine your way through these bars, there is going to be the Soar T1. And, uh, you know, I've got all of the other different crafting tables that you can end up randomly finding out in the world, uh, you know, kind of explained in that video as well. But otherwise, you would come here and you spend 5,000 flux to get one of a bunch of different parts of the Neon Knight Skywing. So if you ran into that, that's what that is. Now, here is that purple NPC that I was talking about where he's going to end up selling stuff for flux. So in this case, he's actually selling us a Jelly Knight mount for 7,000 flux. Again, and I'm not trying to just do this to just plug my videos over and over. It's just that I don't have any of this stuff on console, so I can't show you. But links are in the description of videos that I show you all of the mounts and stuff like that. So just check those out. Uh, or you can just end up searching them. But otherwise, there's going to be all sorts of different characters. You know, these uh, these dudes over here can also end up generating with... Uh, I think they can end up generating with a couple different mounts uh, themselves, let alone the biggest, most important one for Mastery Hunters is ones that end up... There it is right there. Ones that end up generating sales. Those are the big ones because there's so many different sales that you can end up finding from these dudes that just boost your mastery up like crazy. Now, the difference is that the purple ships are going to end up selling things for flux while these guys are going to end up selling things for glim and as you can see right here that is a candy caterpillar so don't be fooled this is one of the grossest mounts in the game like seriously and uh I, I think that's pretty much it as far as the water and fishing and pirate ships and stuff like that are concerned, folks. I hope I didn't end up missing anything, but if I did, rip me. I'm sure you can ask your question in the comments below and somebody will end up replying. We've got a fantastic community if I do say so. Oh, Evil Taco was on and logged off. Well, anyways. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Very much appreciate it. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more daily content. Sign or and stay epic, everybody.